Okie dokie. And you say, why in the heck would you want to burn? Because the standard is, you burn in the summertime, you get a hotter fire, you're going to kill the woodies. We wasn't able to kill any woodies. Now, we, we've got to put a little asterisk on that and, and put a caveat and say, well, it depends. Because two years ago, we had a wildfire come off the interstate and it got into N20B. It had been unburned for at least five years. It had a lot of mulch. It came through at a time the temperature was over 100 degrees and it went through and did most of uh, uh, N20B. All 20B. All 20B. And a year later, <coughs> it looked like a bomb hit that watershed. It was bad. It was just nothing there. Totally devastating. Looked like it had been grazed by horses. <laughs> and <laughs> a month later, we burned our summer burn watershed, which was right next to it. Temperatures were about 10 degrees lower, and it didn't have all these uh, mulch buildup. And you go out there on, in that summer burn one, and it just looks fantastic. Total difference on the effect of that summer burn, and that, I think, was because the summer burn that came from the wildfire had so much mulch layer build up, <coughs> so, so much of a hotter fire on them. It probably, it probably did knock out some woodies, and it knocked out a lot of other stuff. And the only thing that came in was a lot of uh, weedy pools. So, uh, so the whole concept of knocking out the woodies just depends upon the temperature and the conditions we burn under, we have to burn under conditions that will ensure safety for not only the, the people but make sure that the fire is contained. And so the wind can't be too high and we don't want the temperature over 100 degrees because people drop off. And so <coughs> the, the, the entire uh, conditions that we burn under may have any effect on the woodies. So it's possible woodies can have an uh, effect from some of fire. But under the conditions that we burn under, they don't. <coughs> we went, okay. And there was a guy named Henry Howell that uh, put out a, a theory that if you burn it in the summer, when the warm season grasses are dominant, we all have warm season grassland. Most of all, vegetation warm season grasses. If you burn at that time when they're actively growing, you're going to hurt them. You're going to knock them back. And that is going to favor the cool season grasses because the cool season grasses at that time were dormant. So the whole idea is that if you burn in the summertime, you knock back your warm season grasses and increase your cool season grasses. I showed you slides on them. Then it happened. It, we did not knock back any of our warm season grasses at all. And we didn't favor any cool season grasses except the sedges. Okay, so if your objective is to increase species richness, well, this might be a valid reason to do this. Because you get a 61% increase in number of species. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these were annual boards, a lot of them were premium boards, but it, still, in every life form category, you've got an increase in number of species of summer burning. So if that's your objective, that may be a reason. If you remember, switchgrass did not increase the summer burning. It maintained flat levels. Now, most people, when they when they have these uh, renovation areas, they go out there and throw a bunch of prairie seed. Say, oh, I'm going to have a restoration. And they end up throwing a little bit of or a lot of switchgrass. And the next thing you know, you've got a total switchgrass field. So then the, they say, well, I don't want to burn because switchgrass is favored by burning, and I don't want to favor switchgrass anymore. And so then the woody stalk comes in when you don't burn. So it's possible to say, well, okay, summer burning might be an alternative to think about since switchgrass did not increase under those conditions. That if you want to keep switchgrass from increasing, summer burning may be a solution. And I would put maybe in parenthesis because switchgrass is primarily dominated by fertility in the soil. 
And when we did this study out in low fertility, low fertility soils up the past. If you do it in restoration fields, generally it has much higher nitrogen levels in the soil, and so that may override the effect of summer burning. And so switchgrass still may increase like crazy. I don't know. It's just that it's a possibility that we know that we didn't get an increase in switchgrass by summer burning. <coughs> and so we said, well, that might be something to think about for restoration areas. But uh, we don't know. So this one is important. High quality porch. This is, this is October. This is an annually burned area in the background that's uh, uh, already senesced. This is the other summer burn. This is summer burn. Senesced grass. Six weeks after we do our summer burn, every deer on the concert is in the summer burn area. That is the highest forage quality out there. If we didn't have a fence, every bison we have would be there. Mm -hmm. Eating forks. It's not just forks, though. I'll show you in a minute. And even if it is, it's high quality stuff. Because when they're young, they do eat a lot of that stuff. So this would be good down to nothing. Uh, so you'd say, well, it's possible to incorporate the summer burning into a management scheme. And in Oklahoma, they have did this. It's not for everybody, but it's a, it's a possibility to say, okay, if you have an area that you can burn and you're burning year-round cattle or year-round bison or whatever, you can burn a section and make that available in October. High-quality growth to the animals. I mean, that just means you don't have to be supplemental feeding so it, it gives them some high quality forage at a time in which everything else is pretty poor quality. But it's not for everybody. It, it takes special management skills. So we look and say, okay, what do you get regrowth wise if you did burn it in the summer? So these were clipped after the last killing frost. Well, after the first last killing frost. <laughs> Six months later. Um, so the average of grass on the uplands almost 700 pounds per acre, and on lowlands, on a little over 1,000 pounds per acre, but it fluctuates, this fluctuation is primarily dependent upon how much precipitation you get in September and October. But you can't get rebuilt with the rail of the animals. If you look at the forks, you also get a decent amount of forks on average 66 pounds per acre on the uplands, 90 pounds per acre on the lowlands, and again, wide fluctuations from year to year, depending upon precipitation patterns. Lastly, oh, not lastly, next to lastly, <coughs> it's a heck of a lot easier to burn in summer than it is in, in, the, in the spring. It's a heck of a lot easier because you get so much green grass around. This fire goes slow. Slow moving fire gets away, you can knock it out easy. It doesn't take off and just explode across the curve like we have in the water So it's a lot easier uh, burn to control. But, but, the smoke will kill you. The other bad thing about summer burning is. I told you I was going to get herpetology. <laughs> the other thing about uh, summer burning is uh, you have increased mortality. But you also get, and this is important that they totally ignore, you also have increased mortality from spring burn. The snakes are out, the turtles are out, nesting birds are out. If your objective is to minimize mortality of animals that are out there in the grassland, and you want to be burning in the fall and winter because the animals are either gone or underground. Burning in the spring or burning in the summer, you're going to have more power of the animals. And if, if that is unacceptable to you, then you need to be considered burning at other times, like fall and winter. But uh, mortality is, uh, is definitely an issue. The big issue with summer burning. It's awful smoke. It is awful. So I said.
say it's an easier gun to control, but it's a heck of a lot easier, I mean, it's a heck of a lot harder to get people out to do a simple gun because the smoke is so cockeyed down. But, the bottom line, it's, it's a tool you can put in the arsenal and say, you may be able to use it, you may not want to use it, but it's possible. You're not going to destroy your clearly if you have a simple gun. And that's what used to be taught. Because they didn't know, they just said, well, we'll assume it's going to destroy it. So uh, the state offered for a year or two, building insurance company and, and whatever. Um, and, and so what we found is that it, it, it takes special management to utilize it, but it, it's possible that it could be part of the, the tools, particularly the small machines. And, uh, but, green glass burns slow. You know, a lot of smoke, and that's why you gotta have this middle layer. In fact, they often need, you won't even burn with the back part. You gotta have a decent head part to carry that part of You gotta have a, a dead middle layer. I'm done. <laughs> Any questions? I need my chair now. <laughs> <laughs>